Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to derive and discuss about the Darcy Weisbach equation. So this equation is an empirical equation which is used for calculation of friction loss in pipes under turbulent flow. So by friction loss, we mean that the loss of head between two cross sections. Let's say this cross section and this cross section. If you measure the head at this cross section and the head at this cross section, if flow is taking place in this direction, we'll see that head at this cross section is slightly less than the head at this cross section. And this difference in head or loss of head from this cross section to this cross section is given by this formula Hf equals FLV square by 2GD or 4FLV square by 2GD, where this f and this f are representing different term, different things we'll get to that at the end of the derivation now this is an empirical equation which means that we cannot derive the entire equation only from our basic knowledge of the physical phenomenon and mathematics and it means at some point we have to rely on experimentally available data instead of deriving the whole thing mathematically. And this equation is again only uh, is applicable for turbulent flow, but in some form it can also be used for laminar flow. For laminar flow, we have already derived an equation in the previous semester, which was the Hagen Poissoli's equation, but this equation is generally used for turbulent flow, but some form of it, some modified form of this equation can be used for laminar flow as well. Now it is again applicable only for circular pipes in this current form. If you want to use it for rectangular or square or any other cross-sectional pipes, then this equation will have to be slightly modified instead of this diameter of pipe we have to use some other term again this is only useful for uniform cross-sectional pipes that means if the pipe cross-section itself is increasing or decreasing along the length then this equation will not be valid and this is also applicable for steady flow that means if the flow is accelerating or being retarded then this equation will not be valid. Now let's try to derive this equation. First we'll take a pipe segment and we'll imagine two cross sections, one and two. So the flow direction is given by this arrow and on this surface, cross section 1, the pressure is P1 and on this downstream cross section, the pressure is P2. The length between these two cross sections is, eight, uh, is L and the height difference is Z2 and Z1. Sometimes we also tend to derive this equation for a horizontal pipe. In that case, this Z1 and Z2 are not required, but since we want to use it for a pipe which is either horizontal or inclined or vertical, so therefore we'll take this general condition where it has some inclination. Now another component here is the weight of this volume of fluid or liquid. So in that case, it will have a vol weight in this direction downward direction but since it is inclined it will also have a component in this direction if the pipe was oriented like this then that component will be along the flow direction now in this case it is in the opposite direction of flow but that doesn't matter because when we derive it finally the mathematical signs plus or minus will take care of the direction Now, first we will apply the Bernoulli's equation to both the sections, that is section 1 and section 2. 
So Bernoulli's equation gives us that the sum of total head, sum of all the three heads, that is pressure head, velocity head, and datum head must be equal at different sections. But that Bernoulli's equation was derived for ideal fluid. Now this is where we are dealing with real fluid, that means a fluid which has viscosity. And therefore, this part is the Bernoulli's equation for ideal fluid where the total head at cross section 1 will be equal to total head at cross section 2. But since now we are dealing with real fluid, there will be some resistance and to overcome this resistance which is the frictional resistance, some of this head available at section 1 will have to be used, head means energy, so that energy will have to be spent to reach section 2 and therefore at section 2 the head will not be equal to this much but slightly smaller so to make the equation uh, valid that means both sides equal we have to add something else which is this loss that means this much energy or head has been spent to reach to section 2 and therefore this is to be added with head available at section 2 to get the original head at section 1. Now in this case since we are dealing with a uniform cross section pipe therefore the velocity at the two cross sections at this point and at this point will be equal based on our idea of continuity equation. Since velocity will be same as cross section is same therefore this term and this term These velocity terms will get cancelled because they are equal and the remaining part will be only this much. From this we can separate HF. So HF is equal to the difference in pressure head plus the difference in datum head. You can so the, let's give that equation one and you can also think of it in the other way that is the difference between the piezometric head at section 1 and the piezometric head at section 2. So in both way it is a valid explanation. Now let's try to find out what are the forces acting on this fluid element. So this is the fluid element that we have considered between section 1 and 2. Now pressure force acting on both sections 1 and 2 can be given as pressure multiplied by area. Area in this case is pi d square by 4 that is the cross sectional area of the pipe. So on this cross section the force will be p into area. This area is pi d square by 4. Then weight of the control volume, that is weight of this quantity, this amount of liquid will be volume, that is pi d square by 4 multiplied by L, the length multiplied by rho z. So that will give us the weight of that volume. But this volume again is uh, this weight is acting in downward direction but we are dealing with this axial direction so we'll take this component of this weight and that component will be this weight multiplied by sine theta where sine theta is this angle Now here if we sep uh, separate L sine theta from this equation then L sine theta will mean Z2 minus Z1 where this height difference is equal to L sine theta. 
So now this component is given as pi d square by 4 rho g z2 minus z1. So z2 minus z1 replaces L sin theta. Now we'll have to balance the forces. Now what are the forces acting here? The pressure force acting on both sections that is on this section pressure force is P1 into A and on this section it is P2 into A. So P1 into A is pi d square by 4 minus P2 into pi d square by 4. Then the component of weight is pi d square by 4 rho g z2 minus z1 as we have explained in the previous slide minus the frictional resistance or the frictional force. So we'll see what that frictional force is later but for now let's simplify this whole thing and so we can take this pi d square by 4 rho g common from the first four terms and then inside we will have only this much multiplied by this common quantity. Now this quantity from equation 1 or 2 whatever you choose will give us the HF that is the head loss. So now we have a very simplified equation. Only thing is that we still haven't found anything about the frictional force. Now let's deal with that problem. The frictional force is given by the Froude's formula, which is like this, where from the formula we can understand that F is proportional to the density of the liquid. It is also proportional to D and L. Rather than thinking of D and L separately, we can also think of it as the frictional force will be proportional to the surface area of the pipe. So if this is the pipe, then this surface area will be the perimeter multiplied by L. That is, if you cut this pipe here, then this surface area the inside surface area will be L multiplied by this circumference which is pi into D. Therefore, the force is proportional to pi DL and therefore we are writing separately proportional to D and proportional to L. Now, F is also proportional to V, but not directly V, V to the power, some power N. Now, for turbulent flow, fully developed turbulent flow, that means which is not in the transition or laminar uh, zone, in that case, it is found experimentally that N is equal to 2. And therefore, In this equation, we have written that f is equal to something something v square. Now this f dash is called the coefficient of friction. We'll deal, deal with the coefficient of friction later. Now from equation 3, we can now replace this f with this Froude's formula and then after doing some simplifications, we can get to this step and if you want, you can simply pause here and note down these steps. Then we'll reach this kind of an equation where HF is given as 4 F dash L V square divided by 2 GD. Now this equation is called the darcy Weisbach equation. Here f dash can be replaced with f where instead of 4 f dash we write only f. Here this f dash is called coefficient of friction or 
Fanning's friction factor in some other form that is this form instead of 4f dash we write only a single f so that f is called Darcy's friction factor or simply friction factor which means that friction factor or Darcy's friction factor is four times Fanning's friction factor or coefficient of friction. Now the coefficient of friction from our general idea of friction we can say that it may depend on the heaviness of the liquid flowing inside the pipe and viscosity of the liquid that means how sticky the liquid is it may depend on the velocity it may depend on the diameter and it may also depend on the roughness of the pipe till now although these things were supposed to be very obvious that is viscosity and roughness of the pipe but till now we haven't talked about them now let's try to see how we can incorporate these velocities these variables so f or f dash will depend on these parameters rho mu v d and the roughness or average roughness of the pipe which is epsilon now actually it is very difficult to derive a relation between friction factor and the flow parameters if you remember your basic mechanics where you did some problems on um, coefficient of friction you put something on a table and you find out the coefficient of friction on based on how much the angle is and that way but actually the coefficient of friction will be depending on the type of surface what is the roughness over the surface so if you put an object like this then what is the roughness here what is the roughness of the other surface what is the strength of this surface so based on all these things the coefficient of friction should be derived but actually practically we cannot do that and therefore we find out coefficient of friction based on experiments we put this object on the surface and we try different angles and the angle for which it starts to slide down based on that we find out the coefficient of friction but in case of fluid again we cannot directly derive a equation or relation between this coefficient of friction or friction factor and these variables and therefore we have to take help of some experiments but again in experiments there are five variables so it's very difficult to find relation between five variables so what we can do is we can think of based on the knowledge that we have we see that these are these may comprise something which is familiar if we put rho v d by mu this is reynolds number so that's why a scientist named louis ferry moody plotted f against reynolds number and relative roughness so instead of five variables he converted this to only a two variable problem that is all these four variables were clubbed together to form Reynolds number and this roughness was again converted to relative roughness where it is if you have a pipe like this and having this kind of roughness then the average height of this roughness from a baseline is epsilon and the diameter of the pipe is d so the relative roughness is divided, uh, defined as epsilon by t so between these two parameters he found a relation based on lots of experiments through different types of pipes pipes made of different materials and for different velocities of flow so based on that he found a set of curves and prepared a chart or diagram which is famously known as moody's diagram or moody's chart so let's have a look at what that looks like so this is moody's diagram or moody's chart so on this 
scale you see this is friction factor on this scale it is Reynolds number but this is a two dimensional graph and we have already used the two axes so to represent the third variable what we can do is instead of going for a three dimensional curve we simply use a number of curves that means if the relative pipe roughness is 0 0.05 that means the roughnesses the average roughness divided by the diameter of the pipe is 0 0.05 then we'll use this curve and similarly for different values of relative roughness we will use those specific curves so all these curves are for different values of relative roughness which actually represents different materials of the pipe for example in this table you can see that i'll share this diagram or you can simply download it from the internet where you'll see that for concrete coarse concrete epsilon or that really uh, that average roughness is 0 0.25 now based on what kind of diameter you are taking you can find out the relative roughness which is epsilon by t and that way you can choose which of these number of curves you have to take to find out the friction factor now there are several observations to be made in this diagram that is this dotted line marks a boundary and it says complete turbulence which means beyond this line that means when you take only this portion of the curves then the flow is completely turbulent there is no laminar or transitional aspect to it and in that case one very important observation very significant observation can be made that the value of friction factor that means these curves become very flat and that means when you cross for the first curve suppose when you cross this Reynolds number which is approximately 10 to the power 4 that is 10,000 approximately 10,000 so above 10,000 the value of friction factor does not change very much it is approximately around 0 0.7 0 0.07 similarly if you take this curve there also here so in this curve also beyond this Reynolds number which is approximately 2 into 10 to the power 5 that means about 200,000 or 2 lakh so beyond that much Reynolds number again the friction factor is almost constant but if the Reynolds number is below that then the friction factor is a variable which we have to take from the diagram so therefore for turbulent flow generally we treat the friction factor as a constant factor constant value however if it is not completely turbulent flow then you may have to take help of this kind of this curve also a separate line is drawn here which is marked as for laminar flow so for laminar flow it is directly given as friction factor equal to 64 by re that means for laminar flow we can use this formula Darcy way work formula where we can replace friction factor with 64 divided by re between laminar and turbulent there is a small transition zone as you can see however in this zone also you can simply use the curves to get the value of friction factor 
so now this is the explanation of the moody's diagram or moody's chart from which you can find out the friction factor values now let's briefly discuss what is the application of this equation how we are going to apply it so let's say we have two tanks a and b and the difference of head between these two tanks is this much let's call it capital h now if we want to find out what will be the flow velocity from this tank to this tank then we can use now that darcy weisbach formula which is hf is equal to f l v square by 2 g d but how are we going to use it we know the total head difference or head loss but out of this only this much amount is due to friction so the total head loss between this tank and this tank is h out of which hf amount is because of friction and some amount will be lost while entering and some amount will be lost while exiting the pipe or entering the second tank we have already discussed about this loss which will be simply v square by 2g that means whatever velocity is remaining at the end of the pipe which will be v in this case we will convert that to v square by 2g which is the velocity head so that velocity will be completely lost at this point also at the entry also there will be some kind of head loss some amount of head loss which will be some coefficient suppose k and it's also a function of the v or velocity head so we'll discuss about this loss later on in the subsequent lectures so this is one head loss because of entry another head loss is because of exit and an additional head loss of this amount due to friction so all this total head loss will amount to the total head loss h therefore we can write an equation here which is h equal to k into v square by 2g plus hf which is fl v square by 2gd plus v square by 2g now this is loss at entry this is loss at exit and this is the loss due to friction so all these losses together will be total the total of all these losses will be equal to h which we can measure from the figure which is the difference between the water level in this tank and water level in this tank that is this amount so from this since we know h this value of k will be given based on some database v is unknown only 2g d and everything else f will be known if we know the material diameter and roughness and all those things and therefore we can find out v one thing that we have discussed in the previous slide what if this f is not a constant only if the flow is completely turbulent then we can take the constant value of this but otherwise we'll have to again calculate v where this f is again a function of v and therefore this equation will not be very simple to solve it may have a power more than 2 or 3 so in that case we'll have to go for some nonlinear solution or some other method of solution so this is how we are going to use this formula in the next lecture we'll discuss some examples problems based on this formula
I hope you have understood the derivation as well as the application and the nature, the empirical nature of this derivation. Thank you.